five, four, three, two, one. You crazy mother. What is up, everybody? My name is Dane Thompson, and welcome back to another episode of Burn Down. So, in this episode, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go over this little guy here. This is the Holly Terminator X. I get multiple questions on it. I want to go over some of the features and why, if you're looking to LS swap your car or truck, or plane or whatever it is, your boat, you need this. This this really is the be all end all and in the game right now in my honest opinion. And as you can see, I just pulled out of my car because I thought it'd be weird to kind of do like a review and tell you that you need something and not be able to show you the product. Also, to prove to you that this is what runs my car. So let's go talk about it. So I'm sitting here with my Holly Terminator X. Literally, I took this out of my car to show you guys that I actually use it. It's not anything Holly sent to me. Full disclosure, Holly has no idea that I'm gonna put this video out. I have no affiliation with the guys. I do have a big Holly If I banner that I acquired after uh, Holly LS Fest West the last time we went. But ultimately, I met the guys. I bought this before I even went to Holly LS Fest. And again, I don't really have any affiliation other than I like their products. And all the guys I met were really cool. You guys, uh, thank you for being kind and uh, kind of show me the ropes on this thing at Holly LS Fest, really cool. So anyway, let's just jump right into why you need this. If you are a beginner with um, EFI, if you are a beginner with LS swaps, one of the first things that you're gonna run across while you're collecting all the stuff that you need is management. So obviously you need your engine, you need which transmission you're gonna use, how you're gonna stuff it in the car. After that, you're gonna have to figure out how to get fuel to it so now you got fuel, you got your engine in the car, well, how are you gonna manage it? Well, I'll tell you what, this, in my honest opinion, is probably the best option on the table right now for a budget setup. The price points range from $9.99 to like $1,400. I wrote it down here, $1,499. And you're thinking, well, that's not budget, that's crap, right? That's expensive. Well, not when you get into what it actually does, and it really depends on what you want to do. I would say it's more for, somebody that wants to put a car together that wants to grow. If you want to do any form of force induction, be it nitrous, you want to do a turbo, this is a no brainer. Um, you want to do nitrous or turbo, you want to have overdrive transmission, the X-Max is really your go-to. Um, other than a full on like stock cruiser kind of application, but even then you're still going to incur some expenses getting a harness, getting a stock computer. You have to break it all down depending unless you're sticking all of that stuff in your car and then you still have to have it flash and tuned. So you're still acquiring extras. Yeah, you might be able to get a harness cheap, you might be able to get a computer cheap, but if you have to rework the harness and then you have to get it flashed and then you have to get it tuned, you're already probably gonna be close to what this will cost and then this is gonna run stuff right out of the box and it'll allow you freedom to tune it and do your own thing. So let's just jump right into some of the features and why I think this is the best choice for a budget hot rodder uh, like myself and honestly, like the first week this came out, I freaked out, ripped everything out of my car just so I could buy this. And then I stuffed it in. I did a bunch of stuff wrong and I took my car to uh, Holly LS Fest West this year. Had a bunch of fun, met the guys because I was kind of struggling. They all came over, explained a bunch of stuff, showed what I was doing wrong. But ultimately, I still was able to do it. The car ran and drove, everything was cool. Obviously, I didn't win the race, so I was trying to win, but that's, a, that's another video. Anyways, so let's get into the features on this thing so straight out of the box mine's a terminator x so mine's the 999 dollar version and then the x max um, is 1500 essentially and the difference is that one controls the transmission so if you have a later model 4060 4080 that will control the transmission and the engine um, together as where this is just engine management i have a th400 and then i'm moving to a power glide because it's more of a race application so i have no interest um, at this point in the overdrive uh, transmission control but I know a lot of you guys cruisers cars with gas mileage stuff you want to take to shows I would definitely throw an overdrive in that thing any day of the week if you really want to cruise that thing so plug and play so essentially you go on their website you pick which make and model you want to stuff in your car if it's a 24 wheel 58 wheel if you're drive by cable drive by wire transmission control basically they have a list of all the different ones they even kind of line out what is a 24 wheel what is a 58 wheel um, they even show you the different injector plug types because there are different injector plug types depending on the engine combination you're going to swap. And they outline all that stuff so you know you're picking the right one. 
and then you put that thing in your basket and they send it to you and it comes with your ECU and then an actual harness that runs your specific combination. So that is killer. It comes with a 3.5 inch touchscreen display. You can use it to tune and then also to start the vehicle and there's a wizard diagnostics. It does a bunch of stuff. So right out of the box when this thing is, you know, brand new, baby fresh, you plug it all in, you run the wizard and that's how you start it is all through that 3.5 inch display, which is really kind of neat. Um, one of the big selling points, one of the, the biggest things on this, the reason I got it, I'm a forced induction guy, um, brand new to turbos and turboing things. <laughs> haven't, knock on wood, haven't sent the rods out of the motor yet. I think this thing's actually kind of saved me a couple times, but um, this comes with an integrated wideband controller. So it comes with the wideband and then it has a controller built in. So there's no extras. It, the wideband plugs into this, it controls it, and then it monitors your fuel ratio um, through this all in one package. And it comes with the Bosch 4.9 sensor, everything you need. So that is killer because on a different application, if you wanted to monitor fuel ratio, it's an add-on piggyback thing and uh, it's another added expense. Boost control and nitrous control. So again, for performance oriented applications, especially boost control, I'm a turbo guy, or if you wanted like a nitrous, progressive nitrous setup, this will do it. Again, if you, if I had like my stock, my old setup, I actually had a boost controller on top of my stock computer and I had a wide band on top of that that I used to feed into the stock computer. So you can see how it starts really stacking up if you wanna get into forced induction and all those things. This does that as well. Um, on the X Max, it'll do transmission control. Previously, one of your only options really was a stock computer if you wanted to run overdrive transmission, or it was a better option, I, I should say, because you could piggyback like two mega squirts or whatever together, have one transmission control, one control in the engine. Um, there may have been some other options, but a viable budget-friendly option was mainly if you want an overdrive, run the stock computer. Well, now they have an option for those guys, so you don't have to do that. Data logging, so that is another uh, price point option on this thing that is killer. So if you want to make passes, again, performance, Holly is a performance brand, and it, obviously anybody looking to <laughs> LS swap their car typically, we get caught up in performance and going fast, making horsepower, right? So you want a data log, you make a pass, you want to know what the engine's doing. Well, it has a built-in port for an SD card. So you just go to the screen, it says data log, you click it, and then you hit data log. Now you can pay attention to the race, make your run, make your freeway pull, whatever it is for your tuning purpose, and then you end the data log and you pull that out and stick that in your computer, bam. So you don't have to have the laptop for the ride along um, or necessarily don't have to have a laptop. I don't know if you can review it though. We'll have to see. I don't know if you can review it through the little screen. So you may have to have a laptop to review it, but um, I will put that on the screen because I don't know that fact right this second. Inputs and outputs. So this is like the Achilles heel that everybody was talking about. It's like, oh, inputs and outputs. Let me tell you guys something about this that I thought was funny. I was going over with a friend of mine. Before this, like when this dropped and everybody found out I had four inputs and outputs, everybody complained like, oh, that's not enough. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do all these other things. Well, okay, before you had this, when you're running your HP tuner and your stock computer, how many inputs and outputs did you have on that? Yeah, I had a wideband that I was feeding through the EGR signal, I believe it was, or AC compressor, the zero to five volt reference on that thing. And then I had a bunch of math that I had to do in HP Tuner. And then I was actually, I had to go to the dyno to get the math close enough to the dyno's wideband so that the reference I was actually getting was correct um, in my computer. So that is a lot of effort. Most people don't have access to a dyno. They don't have cool friends. <laughs> that own dynos, way too much, way too much effort. So with this guy, um, yeah, it has four inputs and four outputs. So you are technically limited. You just need to be smart with, with what you do and how you do it. That's really it. Other than that, yeah, you can step up to a dominator and there's like a million inputs and outputs, but um, we're talking about budget-friendly price point, beginner stuff. This that Four is more than enough to do what most people need to do, in my opinion. You can uh, leave a comment if you feel differently. So. Let's get into a couple things that they don't really break down because people have asked me. So if I were to do this all over again, one of the things that I would like somebody to have told me was the pressure sensors. So if you're in a forced application, forced induction application, you are gonna need a pressure sensor for the dome on your wastegate. So it is a dome reference boost control system. I think I said that correctly. 
So it basically monitors what the dome pressure is on your wastegate in order to control the turbo. Um, how this was explained to me, they said that is the best way to actually control the turbo. Well, it also monitors manifold absolute pressure, which is the internal pressure of the manifold. So typically that's how you used to do it in the old days with my old setup was whatever the engine is seeing is what the boost is, right? Well, I guess from a technical standpoint, and a better way to do it is they monitor what the turbo is doing and what the engine is seeing. Um, and then it controls the boost strictly off of what the turbo is doing. So that is how it was explained to me. Although the downside to that is you need a sensor for that. Sensors cost money, it's extra. Holly sells them, you can get them aftermarket. Um, I, again, I'm not sponsored by Holly or anything like that. And I do not have a Holly sensor in there. I was told I should by the guys at Holly, but the one I have is working. When it dies, maybe we'll upgrade again with sensors if you wanna monitor fuel pressure. It has the option, it's not an extra input or output. And I would suggest that you do that. Um, I am monitoring fuel pressure. Again, that is an added sensor that you need. Although you don't have to add an input or an output in order to do it, you do have to buy the pressure sensor to enable that feature. Um, the reason I would go with it is because you can just set your fuel pressure and say, yeah, we're just getting 60 pounds or 58 pounds across the board. But in real world, you're not because voltage drop, if your filter gets plugged, if both of those happen, like it happened to me, the thing just does not make the pressure and at least the computer knows so it can compensate for it. It'll know that you're leaning out, but it won't know that you're leaning out because of your fuel. But if you have that, it will. And then ultimately, I think it does a better job of, of compensating and helping you from seeing Uncle Rodney, which I've been lucky enough to avoid at least for a little while. We're working on that though. I know that day's coming, hopefully not soon. So now we've got all of our sensors. Uh, the other last and final thing. All right, really quick, I forgot to tell you while I was over here flapping my gums, trying to rack my brain and think of all the awesome features on this thing. Um, you need a boost control solenoid. So you need a dome pressure sensor and a boost control solenoid, which are both add-ons if you want to do force induction have that turbo whistling and feeding that motor some power. So even if you had a stock regular normal setup, you still need some form of boost control. Although granted, I guess you could do like a check valve ball and be all old school with it. But anyway, if you wanna run the Holley, you need that and the pressure sensor, and then you're back in business. You're making choo-choo sounds. Uh, the other thing that I will tell you that they didn't put in the box is an alternator excite wire. So, and, and a charge lead, they don't have the charge lead either, obviously. So um, your alternator basically sits there once you get this all installed and you go, what do I do with my alternator? And then you kind of look around, and you scramble and you go on the internet and you find out that it's an extra deal. So it's like 30 bucks for the charge wire. So it's essentially the plug that goes into the alternator. One wire comes out, except it has a resistor in there. So you could go make your own if you were savvy enough and figure out what resistor and all that other stuff. You take that, run it to key 12 volt, and then you rock and roll with that. And then obviously the fatter charge wire that goes from your alternator directly to your battery, um, you're gonna have to supply that and figure that one out on your own. So lastly, the fuel pressure sensor. Um, you're gonna buy the sensor and then you have a, a wire that comes off the loom that's only a certain length. Well, when I put it all in my car, I looked at it and I was like, that doesn't reach my regulator because my regulator's way over here. So I'll just cut and extend that thing. Um, as for me, I don't really care. I just cut it, extended it. Everything works fine in my car, but the average casual user probably isn't really into cutting up their brand new thousand dollar harness that they just bought with their computer and everything. And um, Russell's fittings of all people owned by Holly makes an A and adapter fitting because all my stuff's A and on my car. And you literally thread it in, in between the connection for the fuel rail and where your fuel feed comes in and there's an NTP port, you can just thread that freaking sensor right in. So yeah, Russell makes an adapter fitting and it's fairly cheap and then that way you don't have to cut things up and you just put that in line, plug your fitting in, and then you can plug in your uh, sensor and you're off to the races. So I would recommend that over butchering things like I did because I didn't know. And I was excited, we had to go racing, you know. So honestly, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I mean, it does so many things for the money that you would have to stack all these things on top of each other, especially naming like a boosted application like mine, force induction. This is so much cheaper, cleaner, faster, and easier. Oh, and to top it off, if you're not force induction, it already has a little map built right in, so you don't even need an external map sensor on the vehicle. I've had this thing for a little while now. 
I've been to the track a few times with him. Uh, made several different passes and pulls and driven all over up and down the freeways to my buddy's house, things like that on the street. And it's performed awesome. I think the fuel pressure sensor is a must. I think that that thing has saved me more than once. I have been able to lean my car out a few times and that's all my fault. It has nothing to do with this. It's because I'm a, a newbie and pretty much don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I still have not blown it up yet. So there is hope for me yet. So I would say at the end of the day, bang for buck, if you're a newbie and you're swapping EFI and you're looking for management, I would honestly definitely really give this a hard fought look. Great product, great customer service, and the thing works. I'm getting more familiar with tuning. I'm getting more familiar with the interface on the software, which is free, by the way, and it does all kinds of crazy stuff. Go buy one, go get one, what are you waiting for? Thank you guys for watching. Happy LS swapping and uh, go get a Terminator X and go make some smoky burnouts and buy some cheap eBay turbos and let's do awesome stuff. I'm out of here.